this entitled mom is discriminating against this young girl because she has a skin condition. And the worst thing is, she's stuck with her for the entire holiday. How will she escape this entitled mother? Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the show. Two and a half years ago, I was 15 at the time, this incident came to my mind today. To the day exactly, 10 years after the primary cause of the incident was created. What is it you might ask? It is a skin condition. Vitiligo. Basically white patches appear around your skin in sometimes interesting patterns. I first saw Karen while waiting to board a plane. However, I didn't interact with her until a refueling stop some 5-6 to six hours later. Why you ask? The flight departed between midnight and 1am, so obviously we flew in the dark and most people were asleep, or were trying. We landed during daybreak, we weren't allowed to leave the plane. I was sitting, playing something on a tablet, siblings seated with me were miraculously asleep. Gosh how I envied them. When Karen and two kids have walked by to use the lavatory, Karen is Karen, D is Karen's daughter, S Karen's son. Look mom, what happened to her? Karen said something about me being insolent for looking like that. Let's go mom. Then they were coming back. Um, you need to attract a lot of attention to how you look. Please ma'am, keep it down, I don't want to wake them up. Sure, just don't exhibit yourself like this. You're scaring my children. I was wearing a short sleeve t-shirt and shorts. Yes, on a plane. Like, I'm not entering a 40 degrees Celsius heat in a hoodie and jeans. And definitely not changing in the tiny lavatory. M, my mum across the aisle. Is there a problem? If you're their mother, tell her to cover up. You're not to tell me how to raise my daughter. Now please go back to your seat and leave us alone, or I'm calling the flight attendant. Karen stomped off with her kids. Five or six more hours later, my destination. After going through the passport, visa, baggage stuff and other stuff like that, we were headed to the bus, which was to take us to a hotel. And guess who was on the same bus? Yes, Karen. However, she didn't cause any scenes. About three and a half hours of ride on the roads, which appeared to be made mostly of holes, dirt and giant speed bumps, we finally reached our hotel. And who left the bus as well? If you guessed Karen and her family, you're correct. Great. I haven't seen either of Karen's family very much, other than knowing that my little siblings, brother four and sister six, have fell in quite well with Karen's kids. Skip forward a few days. I went with my siblings in the sea. We obviously were in a very shallow water. After some time, D and S came as well, and the five of us began playing and goofing around. D and S could have been like seven or eight. D and S didn't seem bothered at all by how I looked. And then along came Karen. With almost no people near, she saw it as a chance to remind me of the past years. What are you doing there with my kids? Uh, nothing ma'am, we're just playing here, is it wrong? Yes, it's wrong. Look at yourself. They will have nightmares of you, and you're contaminating the ocean. They don't seem bothered by me, and it's not contagious. I don't care. People like you should not go on holidays. You should have stayed home. I sent my siblings to get my parents, who were at the bar. Please ma'am, leave me alone. I'm not happy with it either. Please just leave me alone. Then GTFO, how can you walk around in that two-piece with how disgusting it looks? Me, now in tears. Please go away, I don't like it either. I just want to be left alone and I won't bother you. No, not until I talk to those who thought that bringing a freak of nature here to cause offense is a good idea. I, in tears, ran off past my parents, who were now headed to confront Karen. I, however, stopped only to take the key from our room and ran off to our room, where I broke down. My parents and Karen then got into an argument, which attracted quite a lot of attention. I am keeping the rest for myself for the sake of not sounding too familiar to someone, and to keep this short. D and S weren't allowed to play with my siblings. However, I didn't get any more crap from Karen and her husband apologized profusely when he met me by the pool the evening before our flight home. Karen never told me anything on the way home, neither did the rest of her family. Today, 
a much bigger part of my body is affected, yet I've never felt better about how I look. Okay, number one, how on earth can you contaminate the ocean? <laughs> it's the ocean. It's ginormous, plus it's probably filled with a billion diseases anyway. And number two, how awkward of a person do you have to be to actually go up to them and be like, why are you here? You don't deserve to be on holidays because of your condition. It's awkward enough if you just passively ignore someone because you feel uncomfortable by their condition, but to aggressively go up to them and be like, you don't deserve to be here? That's a whole nother level of messed up. No one deserves to be treated that way. The background information. In our country, there is a priority card for old people and various invalidity. There is a section on the card that allows for one person to accompany the card holder everywhere. This fact is essential for later. My mother never asked for that card, even though she is allowed to have it because, and I quote, I don't need it, I have you. Since the virus, clinics and hospitals are pretty strict on who gets inside their doors. If you have an appointment, fine. If you're a minor, less than 16, a parent has to come with you. If you're an elderly person coming accompanied by someone from the medical profession, a nurse or a paramedic, fine. But if you are in any other case, you have to go in alone, unless you have the card above. Our mother has several medical appointments that she obviously needs to go to, but never wants to. We always have to insist on it. So when she finally goes, she wants one of us to go with her, and basically spent the appointment humiliating us by calling us her little ones. Reminder, we're 29 and 35. She had several of those appointments and most of them fall under her underlying conditions criteria, meaning she can use an ambulance to go there free of charge. On to the story. She had one of those appointments on Monday. She wanted my sister to drive her there. I don't drive yet. Not in America, so not so uncommon to not drive at my age. It's not that far, 70 kilometers north from where we live. But since my sister realized that there was more often than not the possibility for our mom to get transportation to other appointments, and because she never gets a thank you and gets little to no warning, she's not really into the whole free Uber kind of thing. Furthermore, my sister suffers from chronic anxiety. One of the consequences of that is that it makes it difficult for her to do certain things like driving in a city, be in crowds, people or cars, in general. No one likes it, I know. But last time, she went on full panic mode. It's not that big of a city, compared to American cities. However, it is still the fourth largest city in our country of about half a million inhabitants. My mother does not care. She saw my sister sink into a panic, but does not care. Keep in mind that due to the virus, my sister won't be allowed inside the clinic. So she will drive there in panic mode, wait for an hour or two, those doctors are never on time, and then drive back with my mother complaining, which I guess is how she breathes. I then propose that we go by train and then mum would take a cab from the central train station in the city center to the clinic, and my sister and I would go shopping. Going by train on her own is not an option for our mother. She refuses to do it because there are too many strangers on trains. For the cab to go to the clinic, the appointment and then back, we had about two hours and a half of freedom. And well, mobile phones are a thing. They helped us coordinate and make sure our mum was not on her own in the train station. Despite her anxiety, my sister is fine with wailing in a busy street as long as I'm with her and make it look like I know where I'm going. Google Maps are my best friends. The problem was that due to a crossing issue, the trains did not stop our station anymore, but two stations to the north. So my mother wanted my sister to drive all the way to the clinic, insisting that it was the only way or she would not go because she refuses to go on her own or pay a cab all the way, even though she has money stashed in a bank account she thinks is hidden, even though I'm the one managing her money. I proposed a compromise. It's nothing but farms and small towns from here to the new departure station so my sister could drive there if I was sitting next to her to help navigate using the GPS. My sister liked the idea even if she is not comfortable leaving her car for half a day in a parking lot. It never stayed out before. Still, she prefers that than having to drive all the way into the city. The day was fine. Mum went to her appointment and my sister and I got new pajamas from Primark. 
Our mum complained she was not sitting next to my sister in the car, though I would not allow it. She does not really help my sister with her anxiety. We currently are facing a similar issue with physical rehab prescribed by the doctor she saw on Monday, even though there are two ways for her to get transportation without having to pay for it. She threatened not to go if my sister does not drive her. It's closer, but it would mean losing two or three hours because she would have to wait for our mum in her car because of the virus. Two to three times a week while working 80 hours a week at McDonald's and distance learning. She's about to sign up for university to study history, her lifelong dream. When you're in your later years and that older stage of life, yeah, you do need to be more dependent on your kids for things. It's kind of the flow of life. You start off really dependent, then you spend all those middle years being the one who everyone depends on you, both your children and your elderly parents, and then one day you become the elderly and again, become dependent on your children. But surely if you're the one who's dependent on your kids, just because you raise them doesn't mean you get to have a say in everything that they do in their life now. They have to make their own decisions about how they're gonna run their life and start their family. It sounds like they were willing to come up with compromises that the older mother just wasn't willing to do. But that's life. Life is filled with mostly compromises. Very rarely do you get it 100% your own way. A bit of backstory. I, 21 male, work for a private company that gets hired out to work load-ins and load-outs for gigs that happen around my city and sometimes further afield. Our main client is the arena in my city. We don't work directly for any one of the venues we get hired by and we also have strict rules when it comes to the performers whose gigs we're working at. If we should meet the performer or a member of one of the bands, other than a polite greeting, we're not allowed to initiate a conversation unless they do it first a speak when you're spoken to kind of rule. This will become relevant later. There's also three groups of people who work these gigs. The stage crew, that's us, who will be wearing a hard hat, a high-vis vest, a random shirt, cargo trousers or cargo shorts, any colors, and steel toe-capped boots. The security guys, who wear a yellow jacket with the company's name on it, with black trousers and boots, and the arena staff, who wear a black polo shirt or hoodie with the name of the arena sewn on, and black trousers and boots. This is also relevant later. A bit of backstory on the EM, she's a friend of my mother's, maybe in her late 40s or early 50s. She has a son, Kay, who's maybe 15 or 16. I've never really spoken to her before this point, other than a polite greeting if we bump into her at the supermarket. Her and my mother will talk for ages if this happens, and she seemed nice enough. My mother is also the humble brag type of person. She'll brag about my sister's accomplishments and my accomplishments to anyone who will give her the time of day. For example, the other day I found out I'd passed my college course and will be heading down to a different city for university later this year. As soon as I told my mother, she was straight to the phone to various friends to tell them. She's far from entitled though. So before the lockdown restrictions put paid to any work we were due to get, a band who was fairly popular, especially with younger people, played a gig at the arena and I got a call to work at the gig. The day before the gig, my mother got a phone call from EM. I was in my room doing whatever, and my mother knocks on the door and says, OP, it's EM. She wants to talk to you. She hands me the phone and goes back downstairs. Hello? Hi, OP. Your mother tells me you work at the arena now. Sort of. I work for a private company that the arena hires to set the shows up and tears them down. Cool. Will you be working at the concert tomorrow? Yep. Cool. Kay will be attending the show with his dad. Would you be able to get him backstage afterwards? He'd love to meet the band. Quick side note here. The arena doesn't do backstage passes, and they don't let the public backstage after gigs. Some bands will offer VIP upgrades to their tickets, where you get to meet the band before the gig, and sometimes other cool stuff as well. Not every band does these though. They're also usually quite expensive. I got a VIP upgrade for a gig from my mother for my birthday last year, which included an exclusive soundcheck performance, Q&A with the band, photo opportunity, and a couple of other things. That was £75 on top of the £35 ticket. We don't work directly with the band, Usually we don't even get to meet the artists we work with. Have you checked to see if the band are doing VIP upgrades? 
I don't think they are. Plus, it'd probably be really expensive. The ticket price was bad enough. Fair point. Sorry, I don't think I can help you. I don't think the arena do backstage passes, and don't normally let members of the public backstage. EM clearly annoyed by this. Hmph, <laughs> okay. Can you ask around tomorrow at the load-in shift? Nope. The arena probably won't budge unless Kay's terminal heel or in a wheelchair. How dare you speak to me like that? Hand me back to your mother. I go back downstairs and hand the phone to my mother. EM tells her that I was rude to her and refused to get her son backstage. My mother told me she'd deal with me and hung up the phone. She then told me that EM threatened to come down to the arena and give me a piece of her mind. She then told me not to worry. She knew I wouldn't be as rude to her as she was making out and that she probably wouldn't follow through on her threat. The next evening, I arrived at the arena with a couple of my colleagues at 9.30 p.m. and half an hour before our call time. Our call time is usually half an hour before the show finishes to give our boss time to make sure everyone who said they'd turn up has turned up and so we can find out our role for the loadout, lighting, stage, trucks, etc. Get our color-coded high-vis, which we occasionally get to keep and wear at future gigs, and our sub-crew manager, for which role we've been given, can explain the game plan for the shift. The security guys also don't let us in until our boss arrives with a list of who's working that shift. So once we were suited and booted, we headed to the gate to wait for the boss, and I lit up a cigarette and scrolled through my phone. About 10 minutes before call, out of the corner of my eye, I saw EM storming up the path at the side of the arena, towards me. I put my phone in my pocket and prepared for the verbal crap storm I was about to endure. OP, your mother said you'd get K backstage after the gig. Hand me your pass. She held out her hand expectantly. I don't have my pass yet. The boss hasn't turned up. Anyway, my pass is a work pass. So unless Kay wants to work tearing the show down, it was a heck of a show to set up and it'd be even more fun tearing it down. My pass is worthless to you. I'm pretty sure he's too young to work it anyway. You have to be 18 to work for our company. Surely you had a pass for the morning. Give me that. That was for the morning. It's expired now. EM turns red. At this point, one of my colleagues, C, noticed the commotion and heads over. Hey OP, what's going on? Before I could get a word in, EM yells in his face. This boy said he could get my son backstage after the gig and now he's refusing to let him in. Give me his pass. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not the boss. I don't have the passes. His pass is a work pass. We're not even allowed to speak to the band let alone ask them for favors, EM started cussing a blue streak at my colleague, and this got the attention of a security guard. What's going on here? He said my son could get backstage to meet the band, and now he's saying no. The security guard glances at EM, then me, then EM, then me again, with a suspicious look on his face. Is this true, sir? You know the rules in regards to this sort of thing. No, I've repeatedly told her I can't get her backstage, even if I wanted to. Ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Quite frankly, he's not my staff, and I don't give a crap if he gets crap from people. But his boss definitely won't appreciate anyone harassing his employees like this. I'm not leaving until my son can go backstage. The security guard lifts up the walkie-talkie on his jacket, as if he was about to summon more security people to physically remove EM. Before he could press a button, EM gave a massive humph and stormed off. As she was leaving, everyone else around started bawling with laughter, and she turned around and shot us a glare that could kill Thanos if looks could kill. And we all unanimously gave her the middle finger. That gave those of us that were there a good laugh for a bit of pre-work entertainment and really boosted our morale for the entire shift. So thank you, EM. Your entitled idiocy meant we went to work happy. You know, and really that's the one good thing about entitled mothers. It's the entertainment factor. Whether it's an experience that you're having personally, as long as you know, you don't get anything stolen from you. Or whether it's an experience that's shared with the world. The entertainment and joy we get from laughing at these poor fools at least counts as some compensation for the pain they cause in the world. I am not sure why this entitled mother thought that just because her friend's son works at the arena that somehow she's now entitled to backstage passes. If that's something that normally costs a good sum of money, why would she think that he would have the authority to be able to do it? If he could, he could probably make more from doing that than his actual job. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.